Okay, so in this video we are dealing with a chimney stack. So basically it's a, a simply put it's a chimney that's rising up through the roof. This here represents the rafters of the uh, the structure. We've got some timbers here that are coming out around um, the chimney stack itself. Um, and we've got you just some standard block work. You've got the flue liners working the way through as well and some capping on top also. On this drawing as well, normally we draw slates on the roof. In this particular case, we've got tiles, just to get used to working with tiles. And there's an awful lot of um, waterproofing needs to be done around this area here. Okay, so there's a lot of lead flashing and various different trays that go around this section here, which need to be gotten used to doing. Just a very, very quick look before we start doing that. Um, this is the kind of area that we're talking about where the chimney is rising up through the roof. There's lead flashing on the front, there's lead flashing up the side, there's lead flashing on the back of it. These are the kind of things that go around. So these go down the side, this goes on the back of it, there's lead flashing on the front. Okay, you've got like a lead flashing apron that goes on the front and you've got this whole section here as well, um, which goes through the whole thing. So it's actually in dashed lines there. So there's an awful lot of kind of detailing that is put in place there in order to um, make the chimney waterproof and that is basically represented with all this pen work we've got red pen here for lead flashing we've got this black pen here to represent the tray that goes through it we've got red pen to represent flashing here and so on the best approach to take with this drawing is to actually um, do the chimney stack itself so forget about the roof uh, rafter the, the tiles and so on forget about the pen work we're going to focus solely on drawing this chimney stack. Okay, so with some block work going all the way up, we've got a bit of infill cement there, and we've got a um, flue liners here. Now, there's lots of variation for size on the size of a chimney, the size, the diameter, and the height of the flue liners. Okay, but um, we will stick to a standard size that we have there. So I'm going to go 100 millimeter block, about 60 millimeters, 50, 60, 70 millimeters of um, infill cement. We're going to go for 250 millimeters diameter. A flue liner and then the same on the other side so we'll, we'll work from there now so to do that oh um again as always want to make sure that we have our page lined out properly with a border and title box all the way around and the equipment we're using t square 60 30 set square we've got a 45 degree set square 2h and a h pencil and we've got a rubber and our red black green blue pens for any of the pen work that needs to go in. So as always, we'll do things lightly first. Um, and I'm going to draw one set of blocks, or one line for the outside of the block work. So lightly all the way down my page, fairly central. You can see the position that I'm talking about. I'm going to draw a line straight down there, but a little bit closer. Now, I'm going to actually mark off all of these positions. So I've drawn a line, I'm going to say that line I've just drawn is here. I'm going to mark 10 millimeters for that, 6 millimeters for that, 25 millimeters for that, 6 and then 10. Just to mark off all those lines to help guide me. So I might just draw a light line across there to help mark those positions. And I'm going to go 10, about 6 millimeters for the infill cement, 250 millimeters for the um, flue liner, 6 millimeters for the infill cement, and then 10 millimeters for the wall on the outside. I'm just going to draw the walls first of all. There like so. Okay. And um, I'm just going to lightly draw this line now for the flue liners. The outside of the flue liners there. All right, I can get my rubber, maybe just rub out that guideline that I just drew just to avoid any confusion. That gives me a guide for the size of my chimney. And as we said, the chimney's width can vary. There could be extra cement in the sides there. There could be wider flue liners that are being used or anything like that. All right, now I'm going to pick a position somewhere um, close to the top of the page and I'm going to say that's going to be the top of the block wall for the chimney work. And before I go any further, I'm going to just rub out the top of that. Like so. From 
there. Before we go any further, I'm going to mark down the number of blocks. So 22 millimeters per block, as we know, 22 and a half, as we know each block is 225 millimeters in height. So 22 millimeters there. blocks then like so So a good number of blocks all the way down the page just to give you plenty to work with okay now what I've drawn there as I said the block work down here the block work down there I'm now going to start drawing in some flu liners so this line here and this line here represent the outside of the flu liners thickness of the flu liners can be just two two millimeters or so two or so millimeters the height of the flu liners they can vary we'll make ours 450 millimeters as i said there's variation in that when we're going to make our flu liners at a height 450 millimeters okay now as you can see also the flu liner um sticks out above the chimney so what we'll actually do there is we're going to draw in this chimney cap first of all so we can actually start off with the top flu liner and work our way down okay so I'll draw in the chimney cap again. Chimney caps can vary in shape and size. So let's not overthink it. Let's just maybe measure out 10 millimeters here, like so. And we will measure it up, let's say 150, so which will be 15. We'll measure up 10 here. So again, size wise, that can vary. There's the first chimney cap. And we'll do the same thing over here. Ten millimeters out there. I'll emphasize again there is room for variation in size for those that's a concrete cap there so symbol for concrete like so okay so uh, what we can do now then is we can we'll come up just around 10 15 millimeters and we'll start working down with the flue liners as we remember, there's that little joint there where the flute line is slot into another, which we've discussed before. So, 400 millimeters, as I said, as I said I'm going to come up yeah, about 10 millimeters there. And I'm going to let that be the start of my. Flu, uh, flu liner so I'm going to make it a thickness of 20 millimeters there and thickness of 20 millimeters there I'm going to bring those lines down lightly just to guide me down the drawing also I'm not going to do those heavy just yet because we need to get that little joint on each one now 450 millimeters we're going to make the height of our flue liners that's 45 millimeters 
and make sure you screen that down. And the first flue liner is one without a lip on it, or the top one, that's just going to slot straight in like so. That's the first flue liner. Like so. Now, the next one is 450 millimeters again. So I'm going to measure down 450 millimeters. I'm going to mark the bottom of that flue liner. And as we know, those flue liners have a little lip that comes out there down and around like so. Where they slot into one another. Same over here, we'll do something similar. We're not going to overthink too much. Come down a little bit there and around like so. And we have that one. Same again. We'll walk our way down with these then. So I'm going to keep working. I'll just zoom in a little bit more so it can be a bit more clearly seen what I'm doing. And you can walk from there. So 450 millimeters down. That's going to be heavy lines up there. It's going to be a heavy line there. We won't overthink sizes here too much. millimeters One more. Just for the fitting on the drawing. You can see when I'm doing these leaps, it's very much kind of estimating measurements, free handling certain parts of it. Let's not overthink that too much. Okay. At that point then, we can do the symbol work just maybe for the kind of, it's an infill cement, it's a very light sandy cement, so dots are just fine to represent that. Up along there. And then we have um, that part of it pretty much done. So, as you can see there, we have the structure now of that chimney stack all done. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw in the rafter, the battens, and the tiles. And whatever pen work needs to be done from there okay now the angle of the roof can vary depending on the design of the, the building and you put the actual for handling its sake unless you're told otherwise let's just go with a, a 30 degree angle on our roof okay so i'm going to go somewhere here random enough and i'm going to go off this way 30 degrees and extend that out further this way at 30 degrees Okay, um, a hundred and fifty millimeters is the size of a rafter, so I'm just going to set my zero on that line there and mark a hundred and fifty millimeters. And I'm going to draw the rafter thickness, extend that up this side, and now we have the position of the rafter. Next thing we'll do is we're going to draw the trimmer joint, so basically around this chimney. We have like a, a timber structure built around it. So we have there is joists going that way. As you can see that the angles are joined. So we'll come out a small bit there and we'll draw those. So somewhere maybe around here. 
50 millimeters thick, which is five if you want to scale down to 10. Somewhere around there. I'm not overthinking sizes of that. Just a little bit up out of the way of the chimney. We will join diagonals. Put that there also. Like so. Okay. Now, next thing that we'll draw is our battens. So battens here, 50 by 25 millimeter battens. Um, we'll draw the ones down on the bottom here first of all. There's a little bit of work that needs to be done up there first, but we'll have to focus on this ones here. These battens are three, um, 350 millimeter centers for these tiles. Again, tiles of varying size. We're going to make those um, 350 millimeter battens. Um, at, uh, battens. The first one will just come down a small bit out of the way of the chimney itself. So I'm going to start there. My first batten. I just measured my five millimeters there. I'm gonna go out. Twenty-five millimeters is the height or thickness of these buttons. So we'll go two and a half millimeters there. And that's what we have. There and there. Represent that by joining the diagonals, and I'll draw maybe two more buttons into place. They are at 350 millimeter center, so I'm going to put my 35 in the middle of that button. That's going to bring me to the center of the next button. Down 35 from that will give me the center of the next button. So if that's the center, I'm going to set my 5 up in the middle of that dot, and there is where they'll be. We'll draw those buttons like so. Join the diagonals. So there are three buttons in place now. As we said in this particular route, we're going to draw it's got tiles. Tiles are like ceramic, more ceramic um, roof covering. You can see there's a little lip. It slots down over the button and comes out. Okay. Tiles will vary in size. We're going to say that these tiles are 420 millimeters. Again, you can vary that. So I'm going to go 420 millimeters. So basically from here, it's got, it's got to overlap a small bit on that tile. I'm going to give it about a millimetre or two of thickness. Extend that along there until it wraps down like so. That's that one. And then we're going to do the same with the next one. It's got to just wrap, it's got to just sit down over. It's got to sit down over one another. So it's going to go up like that. Up a millimetre or two. Like so again you can see I'm kind of slightly just adjusting things so that they'll work and those tiles are going to work the way down that's that slots down over there like so okay that's that section done there we'll move forward now next we're going to go and work on the battens and the tiles up on this side but at the back as we mentioned earlier at the back of the um, roof there's like the uh, lead guttering which goes on the back we have here, so um, that's lost up the, through the back of the chimney. You can see down there, so there's a little bit of, of work needs to be done to make space for that. And you can see that there, there's a little bit of a structure and um, comes in like that. So what I'm going to do is, and then, then our battens will start from, from this little tilting filler that's put into place after that. So what I'm going to do is, again, just come up a small bit of space there, make your judgment, I'm going to say about here, and I'm going to say that they led that guttering at the back is going to go there about two millimeters of thickness on that all right that piece of um guttering then i'm going to just bring up a small tilting fillet again two or three millimeters like so and that just supports the structure of that guttering there 
All right, so that's all kind of just built in there to allow the support of that. That's actually a wooden structure there. P bits of wood going around the back of the chimney. From there then, we can start measuring our 350 to get the battens. I'm just going to do maybe two more battens to, um, for the sake of this drawing. 350, 350, um, set my five mil either side of that. Like so. Twenty-five millimeters in height for those buttons. Like right to this, fifty by twenty-five, and we have those drawn into place there. Okay, and then from there, then we can draw a couple of tiles on those. So we said four hundred twenty millimeter tiles. So um, four twenty to go down past there. Again, we can just sort of work our way around on that. The tile slots down to the back of that batten. Same over here. The next tile is going to be four twenty. Up over lapping that tile. Like so. Excellent. Okay, and they'll obviously work the way up the rest of the roof. At that point then, uh, we have pretty much got the drawing complete. It's just a case of a case of getting the waterproofing. So we're going to do our lead flashing on the front and on the back of it first of all with a red pin. So lead flashing is going to actually be worked into the joint. So the first joint above the rafter there, we're going to have lead flashing built into that block joint there. Working down the side of the wall and up on resting on the tile. So this section here is now waterproof. Rainwater can't get in there. There will also be roofing felt underneath the battens as always in blue pin. And that roofing felt will actually work up the back of that as well. So you've got good waterproofing in that section there. The lead flashing is also going to be here. That is going to come across there. Up to the next joint, up like so. That joint's a bit too close, so we're going to go up through there and into that joint there like so all right so you've led flashing that's a good ring down the back of it now um next we'll get the uh, roofing felt underneath the battens down along here like so that'll go down across that tilting fillet as well so you've got waterproofing there and waterproofing there and then that tray that goes through the whole sector through the whole chimney so that tray there that's actually inside the structure the structure is built into that built over that or through that and we're just going to represent that structure there coming over here like so and up there like that it's going to come up there and it's going to be around that so the joints are a little bit in the way there but that will work out just fine on it also okay so that is that section there at that point then we are ready to start labeling the work and um as we always say we do be nice and neat and tidy with the label work involved so we're going to use this space this space and down here to get those labels so um down here we've got the uh, so out here we've got the precast concrete chimney cap chimney cap okay here we've got the block work so it's going to label a hundred millimeter block block here we have infill cement Lead 
flashing in the red. We have got um, roofing felt. I'll just bring maybe a line down here. The blue pen. Here next, and use this space. We can label this tilting fillet. The rafter can be labeled here. Battens and the tiles can be labeled here also. So 50 by 25 mil batten. And 420 millimeter tiles. So we'll bring a line down here for that. 420 millimeter tile, about 20 millimeter thickness. We've also got the, um, so we said a 250 millimeter diameter. So 415 height by 250 millimeter diameter flue liner. There. And then um, that is pretty much all of the labeling done. And that drawing completes.